right, so a lot of my subscribers on my main channel, Clutch Guitars, have been asking they want to see my guitars. Now, the Clutch Guitars channel originally started out to be a guitar channel. That's what it was meant to be. However, as you know, it turned into something completely different. And now I kind of feel weird putting guitar stuff over there because it's like a treasure hunting and travel channel. This channel here is where we're going to do the guitar stuff, I suppose. And anyway, um, if you guys don't know, I am a luthier by trade. Um, I was trained in 2002 to 2003 at the Roberto Venn School of Luthery in Phoenix, Arizona. And then directly after that, I was hired into um, the first act custom shop or pro shop or studio. They called it the studio for artists. It was basically just seven luthiers in like a room, a glass encased room in this office building. You know, we were like kind of like um, the seven dwarves we used to call ourselves. We had a violin maker, there was, and the rest of us were guitar makers. Um, and we just basically would build guitars for different artists. Like, um, I mean, we, we made guitars for a lot of, I could name drop all day, but one important one that I should mention is Richie Sambora because his guitar tech, when he came to the shop to work on these custom guitars that I was building for Richie, uh, him and I were working together. A guy's name was Chris. Uh, Hoff Schneider, he passed away in 2016. Rest in peace, Chris. Uh, awesome guy, be a great friend. A little crazy, but uh, I think we all were. But he was hilarious. Anyway, Chris and I became really good friends over these uh, Richie Sambora uh, guitars. And Chris worked for Michael Tobias over in Woodstock, New York. So, long story short, Chris introduced me to Michael Tobias over in Woodstock. Um, Michael hired me as an apprentice. Um, for him, and by the way, I worked up in Boston for one year. That's how long the apprenticeship was. Um, and then after that, I went directly to Woodstock, New York, and I worked with Michael um, and Chris for on and off for like five, six years, something like that. And during that time, I had my own repair shop at my apartment or my house or where, wherever I was living at the time. I moved like three or four times during that time period. But I always had a repair shop in my house and I was building custom guitars out of my kitchen and out of my living room and everything. I ended up having a couple orders for guitars. I did tons of repairs. And in my opinion, doing repairs is actually a really good way to keep up your chops as a woodworker and a luthier in general. So that's I always had a repair shop. And I've been doing that since 2003, it is now 2020. However, in 2016, when I moved to Colorado from Pennsylvania, that's the last time I had a shop. So I actually had a full scale guitar repair shop um, in Hazleton, Pencil West Hazleton, Pennsylvania. And when I moved to Colorado, I sold all my tools and I've been so bored, I've been making YouTube videos. All right, so this guitar design is called the XK design. Um, it's dirty, so don't worry. It's, I mean, I've had this guitar hanging on the wall for a long time. I play it all the time. So it's going to be a little more beat up than the others, as you can see. Uh, it's well used, um, which is not a bad thing at all. It gives it some character. But that's the design right there. You can see it's kind of like a super strat style of guitar, kind of like you'll see your Ibanezes and your Fender Stratocaster. You know, it's got the two horns. Very basic, except it's a little more offset. Um, they're a little bit pointier. And then in here, I, I actually carved the top to make this design kind of like cut out around both sides to give it that kind of look when, uh, when, it, when you tilt it, you can kind of tell more what, it, what shape it is, right? So as you can tell, possibly this is an eight string guitar. This thing is made for playing metal music. That's what the peg head looks like from a distance. We'll get it down on the bench to take a closer look. And let me go ahead and flip it over while we have a good view of it. All right, so there's the back of it. Nice deep belly cut right there. That's what that's called because that's where your belly goes. Um, this is the control cavity. Again, it's magnets. I'll show you that up close later. Uh, strings through body, the um, eight strings through the body, through the bridge on the other side. I'll show you what that is. Um, what else on the back? Got a bolt-on neck there. You can see it's got a bolt-on neck. And let's take it over to the bench, get a closer look. All right, so for the hardware, we have a, this is called a Hipshot Bridge. A company called Hipshot makes it. And when I built this guitar, 
Um, this is a prototype eight-string electric guitar. When I built this guitar, there were no other eight-string electric guitars in production anywhere. So I had to actually have this company, Hipshot, custom make this bridge for me, along with a few others, because I was building a few of these. Um, and they, they came through, I mean, hip shot bridges are awesome. They don't move. They're not like, they don't have a tremolo or rammy bar or anything. They're just, they stay right there. They don't move. So this guitar stays in tune. So there's only one pickup in this guitar. This is a, I think this is the ceramic pickup or maybe it's the Alnico. I can't remember which one it is, but it was custom made for me by a guy over in Sweden. Uh, Johan Lundgren made this for me in his shop for Lundgren pickups. So he had to custom make that pickup for me as well. This pickup ring right here is made out of ebony. I made that by hand, of course, along with the rest of the guitar. Very simple controls. Again, just a volume knob for on and off. From this angle, you can really see the, the way that this thing is cut out. It's shaped like it's got that uh, comfort carve or whatever you want to call it there. I did carve it all the way down here. So when you have your arm resting on it, it's got that natural curve right there. This thing has a super wide ebony fretboard. Um, I think it's two and a half inches down here, I think. And I can't remember the exact uh, string spacing or anything. I built this thing in 2006, so it's been a while. I don't remember the exact specs, but I have everything written down in the certificate. So at this point in building guitars, I have started to put uh, mother of pearl inlays in the side markers here. Again, I have no position markers in the fretboard. I thought it looked cooler just being completely black like that. The logo is a lot closer to what it's supposed to look like. Let me zoom in a bit. And that is, again, it's a piece of curly maple uh, inlaid into a bit thicker of a ebony head cap there. By the way, this ebony is actually Makassar ebony. So it's got, it's hard to see, but it's got like stripes in it. It's kind of wore down. You can see all the marks from when I've been, I've been playing it, but down here you can kind of see there's a brown stripe. It's, it's got like cool stripes and stuff through it. But that is the eight string peg head design. I went back to screws because um, when you're banging this thing around and everything, they could come loose. So I went back to screws for attaching my um, truss rod covers. This nut is a white tail deer antler. A lot of my guitars are white tail deer antler. And on the back, it just says XK8 prototype. And that's it, man. That is the XK design, eight string. All right, so how does it sound with this Lundgren? Uh, I think this is the ceramic pickup. I made a few of these guitars. I sold them though. Um, and I honestly, unless I took it apart, I wouldn't know if this is the ceramic or the Alnico pickup. But um, you get an idea what it sounds like here. So basically, first of all, it's tuned. This bottom string is an F sharp. Then it goes to B, E, A, D, G, B, E. So it's tuned from these six top strings here are standard E and then B and low F sharp. So you can play this thing like a regular six string guitar if you just use these top six strings, right? Or you can use it for what it's made for, play some metal and use your lower strings, right? It just sounds real sludgy and it's real heavy, man. <laughs> So I know I don't have this set up for recording or anything, I'm just using the microphone on the camera here, but you can kind of get an idea of how it sounds. Right? I have other examples uh, doing guitar covers with this guitar. Um, I, I think I did a portal cover with it and some Pelican covers. You can check those out um, in my covers playlist on this channel if you want to hear more of it. But... So you get an idea of what it sounds like. Hope you guys enjoyed this video of this Clutch Custom Guitar. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you're here by leaving a comment. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, check out my playlist. I have a few of my other custom guitars. I'm making videos for them. And uh, subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.